our paragraph right there at the top. It says the word gospel means what, everyone? Good news or good tidings. The whole Bible is filled with good news. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Even the subject of what? Hell, rightly understood, is good news. There have been down through the ages significant misunderstandings about the subject of hell. In this lesson, we will seek to cut through these misunderstandings and pre-programmed pr pictures in order to arrive at what kind of truth? Bible truth. If we let the Bible speak, we will surely succeed. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, and in order to properly understand hell, we're going to have to look at hell in its chronological context, and that is how it relates to the, si the issue of the millennium. Now, how many of you have heard that term before, the millennium, in reference to the Bible? Okay, it's a very simple word. It comes from two words, mille, which is 1,000, and annum, which is years. 1,000 years. We're in Revelation chapter 20, and I'm beginning in verse 1. What verse, everyone? Verse 1. John says, Then I saw an angel coming down from where? Heaven, having the keys to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid a hold of the who? Dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for how long? A thousand years. Now, the word millennium does not actually occur in the Bible, but it comes from this idea of 1,000 years. Milli, a thousand annum years. 1,000 years, so he was bound for 1,000 years. Verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up. Aren't you glad to know that Satan's going to be shut up someday? Amen. Shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should what? deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were what everyone finished but after these things he must be released for a little while verse 4 I saw thrones John saw, said and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God serious business to follow the Lord who had not worshipped the beast nor his image and who had not received the mark on their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for how long everyone 1,000 years. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in which resurrection? The first resurrection. Over such the what? Second death has no power, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him for how long, everyone? 1,000 years. So you see that time period coming up there several times. 1,000 years, 1,000 years, 1,000 years. Now you'll notice something. The Bible here speaks of the second death. Of the what death? The second death. Let me just be very plain with you right at the outset here. The second death is hell. That's what hell is. Hell is the second death. Now think about it for just a moment. If you have a second death, what do you have by definition? You have a first death. And why does the Bible make the point of saying this is the first resurrection? Because there are, in fact, guess how many resurrections? Two resurrections. Look at your study guide there. It says, the clear teaching of Scripture is that there are how many resurrections? two resurrections. Jesus himself affirmed this in John chapter 5 verse 28. We've already quoted that verse for you in our last presentation when Jesus said, do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in the which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Some will come forth to the resurrection of life and others to the resurrection of condemnation. And so there are how many resurrections? Two resurrections. And we get that right from Revelation chapter 20 where it says this is the first resurrection. And so what we have here, very simple, the millennium is a period of time, 1,000 years, that is bookended. That is to say, on this end, you have a bookend, so to speak. And on this end, you have a bookend. And those two bookends are the resurrections. The first resurrection takes place at the beginning of the millennium. The second resurrection takes place at the end of the millennium. Now, let's just cut right to the chase. The first resurrection is the resurrection of the righteous. The resurrection of the who, everyone? The righteous. That's why it says, blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. The second resurrection then would be the resurrection of the who? The wicked. Okay, now think about this for just a moment. When Jesus returns, there will be four groups of people. Now, you might have heard me say before there will be two groups, but I want to make it a little more complex and a little more accurate here. In the past, we've said there are two groups of people, the wheat and the tares. But we're going to further subdivide the wheat and the tares into the living and the dead. And so there would be four groups of people. You'd have the righteous living and the righteous dead, and the wicked living and the wicked dead. If that makes sense, say amen. Every single person that is living or has ever lived can fit into one of those four categories. Either the righteous living or the righteous dead or the wicked living or the wicked dead. Amen, everyone? So far, so good. So let's look at the five events that begin the millennium. We know that the millennium takes place here at the time of the first resurrection. Then there's that period of 1,000 years where Satan is bound. And then the second resurrection comes at the end of the 1,000 years. Let's try and put this together. The second coming is the event, the first event that commences or begins the millennium. What is it, everyone? The second coming of 
Christ. There are many uh, evidences that we could give to this, but let's just look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 to 17. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are, what are these words? Alive and what? Remain until the what? The coming of the Lord. So is someone going to be alive when Jesus returns, yes or no? Yes, just like Elijah and just like Enoch, they will go to heaven without seeing death. The, the, the theological term for that, the technical term for that is they will be translated. They will be what, everyone? Translated. That is, they will be lifted from here to there without ever having to pass through that experience of death. So notice what it says. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are what? Asleep. And someone tells me, tell me please, what does the word asleep mean in this context in the Bible? Those who are dead. That's exactly right. Notice the next verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise what? First. So that is to say that those who had fallen asleep with their faith in Jesus, they will be resurrected first. Resurrected what? First. That's what we just read. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection, on such the second death has no power. And that's exactly what Paul says here. The dead in Christ rise when, everyone? First. Not second, but first. Notice verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, what's the next word? Together. That's a critical word. With them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Where? In the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Can someone say amen? And so, when Jesus Christ returns, the resurrection of the righteous takes place. If that makes sense, I want you to say amen. So those are the first two events that begin the millennium. All we're going to do, very simple, is we're going to look at five events that begin the millennium and then five events that end the millennium. And you'll be able to see that basically you have this period of 1,000 years. Here's the five events that commence the millennium. Here's the five events that end the millennium. And in the meantime, the devil's on a 1,000-year vacation where he's shut up. Can someone say amen? Okay. So the resurrection of the righteous takes place as we have already said. The next then is the translation of the living righteous. Let's go back to those four groups of people. The righteous living and the righteous dead. We've already dealt with those two groups of people. What happens to the righteous living when Jesus returns? The, the Bible says they are translated or caught up with God into heaven. Okay, they are translated. What's that word, everyone? Translated. What happens to the righteous dead when Jesus returns? Resurrected. Okay, so we've already dealt with two of our four groups. Okay, four groups of people, the righteous living and the righteous dead, the wicked living and the wicked dead. We've already dealt with two of them because those that had fallen asleep in Christ are raised from the dead and those who are alive and remained unto the coming of the Lord are going to be translated to heaven without saying de seeing death. And oh Lord, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number. Can someone say amen? amen? Okay, so see, we're just working our way through this in a methodical manner. Some will be alive when Jesus returns. They will be translated without dying. Amen? Powerful. So now we continue. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul says. Listen, I tell you a what? Mystery. We will not all what? Sleep. What's that a reference to? We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last what? Trumpet. Second time we've seen that tonight. Notice verse 52. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put, uh, clothe itself with the imperishable, and this mortal must clothe itself with what? Immortality. That's exactly right. We've already talked about that. So that takes place there at the last trump. He says, we won't all sleep, but we will all be changed. Can someone say amen? So, second coming of Jesus, the righteous are resurrected, the translation of the living righteous, the wicked living are slain. That is to say, the Bible says that they are destroyed with the brightness or the glory of His coming. On one occasion, Moses was on top, on top of Mount Sinai, and he said to God, God, I want to see what you look like. And God said, I'll show you what I look like on three conditions. Number one, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. Number two, I'm going to put my hand over you. And number three, you have to see only my back parts, because he said, no man can see my face and what? Live. Okay, the idea here is that if God just decided to make an appearance here tonight in this room, in His unmuted glory, every one of us would be immediately, instantaneously vaporized because of the amazing, consuming fire of the glory of God. Can you say amen? Very simple. And so what happens to the wicked, those who are alive when Jesus returns, they are slain either by the cataclysm of the events surrounding the second coming or by His glory. Notice this from 1 